Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting for my beginner painter. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on mine, you are going to see that I went over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker, and that's for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. Um, if you utilize the traceable, you do not have to go over the lines with the Sharpie marker. So we are going to start, we're going to take the section by section, we're going to start with a light blue. And that is white plus a little bit of blue. And I am using the medium flat brush. I'm a bit on, I'm on a smaller canvas today. So you can use the large flat brush or the medium flat brush, depending on um, the size of the canvas that you're using. And if you have to mix your light blue two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. We're taking that same color down here um, to the water area. And then we are going to be putting some darker blue on top of this. And I am taking this and going right over those traceable lines. Um, and we're going to fill in that whole area. If you happen to be on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry this color around the sides of the canvas. And each time that you reach the edge of the canvas with your paint, um, just carry it around the side. It just looks nice to do that. All right, so here we grab some of that direct blue. And you can see where I'm just kind of slapping it on the canvas. And then I'm going to go back with light pressure and kind of blend this darker blue into the light blue. And this is called wet on wet blending. And it's a rather therapeutic and one of the more fun aspects of the painting process. So enjoy this as you are just kind of getting comfortable with blending and mixing your paint. If you end up needing to reapply like I just did right there, go ahead, just reapply. The more you move your brush, the more the two colors blend together. Now, if you are one of my beginner painters and you're holding your breath, take a big inhale, relax. I am very proud of you for painting at home. You're going to do a great job. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to clean the brush off really good, and we're going to go start with white. We're going to add a little bit of blue, and then we're going to add a tiny amount of red. And you can see where I'm actually just mixing it right on the side of my light blue and then adding a little bit of red. We're going for kind of a really light periwinkle color. And that red just kind of warmed it up to change it a little different from our sky and our water. So this is going to be the base uh, part for the footbridge. Um, and you can see I am just painting right over those traceable lines, trying to get the, the path on there. And you can see that it just kind of goes to the edge um, about halfway through that left-hand side of the arc um, on the bridge. And then now I'm going back to the light blue we were using. And on the right-hand side of the bridge, I'm just kind of putting that shadow. I'm just kind of placing it on there and then wipe the brush off, wipe off that excess paint. And then with light pressure, I'm pulling that light blue towards the left. And again, you can just kind of observe what you see. And if yours is a little bit different, totally okay. Now I did uh, go in with white and I'm just basically putting lines there. These are tiny, tiny little highlights on that footpath. They don't have to be anything exact. Later on, when we look at the bridge, we're mainly going to be uh, looking at the red portion of the bridge. All right, so we do need a dark color. So we're mixing our blue and our red and we're going to get a shadow underneath the bridge. Um, and since we're not using black in our canvas, this is a great place to just uh, learn how to not have to put black in our canvas. And this is a bit more traditional to uh, oil painters back in the day, um, not using black to make your shades. And that red and that blue do a great job of making a dark color. So again, just going right underneath the bridge, getting that dark shadow in there. And then we're going to clean our brush, uh, pause the video, take your progress photo. And then now we're going to do a new mixture of blue and green. And this actually makes a really dark, real pretty teal. And just like underneath the bridge, we're getting that dark shadow element without using black. Now, how I'm applying this for the foliage, I am using that middle flat brush, kind of holding the brush perpendicular and just making a bunch of little dots that kind of overlap each other. We are going to do this um, 
a second time because I am using student grade paint. It's a bit on the transparent side. You can even see in a few places uh, the transparency of the paint. And by doing a second layer, it's just going to give us a little bit more opacity, um, opaqueness, and uh, just look a little bit better. All right, so once you've got those shadows in there, we're going to just clean the brush and we're going to go directly into the green. Same application. You're just kind of basically making dots that overlap each other. We are overlapping the color we just put on there with the blue and the green. Um, if you're inclined to put a color that we use as we do the foliage somewhere, I do not. Go right ahead and trust that. Um, basically, we're going to be doing different shades of green and light green in here just to give the illusion of this nice zen um, garden that we're hanging out in. All right, so now we're moving into green and yellow, and you recall how much yellow you add to it. Um, and same thing, just kind of basing off what we just put on the canvas. And you can notice that where the bridge path is, I am just going right on top of that, because you want to imagine that some of your foliage, um, you can see through the bars on the bridge. And when we get into adding the bridge, um, you'll see where that kind of comes into play. So with acrylic paint, the nice thing about acrylic paint is you can just layer it over and over and over again. So once it dries, it'll be really easy to put the red bridge on top of it. All right, so still filling up that space with my yellow and green mixture. And there are going to be times where maybe I have more yellow, maybe I have more green. That diversity is a good thing. So don't feel like you have to get the exact same shade every single time you mix your color. And in a moment, we will be using more yellow. Um, compared to green and just getting that highlight value in there. So we started with our dark shadow spaces and worked our way backwards to get to some lighter areas. So at this point with the last, um, that light yellow green, there should be no more foliage left. There may be a little bit of canvas space showing on the bridge, but other than that, everything else should be filled in and starting to create that nice kind of lush depth for our garden. All right, another spot to pause the video and take your progress photo. You can let this fully dry before we move into the next step, and I do recommend that. So now we're going to move into yellow green. Same thing, we're going to move down into the water and get these lily pads on there. And I am using the small pointy brush, and we're just basically making ovals on top of the water. And like I said earlier, I do recommend that the, you let your paint dry, the water paint, the blue paint dry before you put your lily pads on there. And just like with the foliage, if you have to mix your color a second time and maybe there's more yellow or there's more green, that's okay. Having some diversity down with your lily pads will just add more um, uniqueness to your painting. Um, as we're using the small pointy brush, if you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky, that does mean you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help your process. You're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for taking time out of your day and just getting creative. Enjoy it. All right, so you can put as many or as few lily pads on here as you want. Anything in any of my videos and paintings, you are more than welcome to leave stuff out or change it and make it your own. All right, so now we're gonna move into the bridge and the background is fully dry. So I'm using the small pointy brush and red paint. Now again, um, you can kind of see how I put my pinky out and I'm using that as kind of like my pivot point. You can also rest your forearm against the edge of the table and you can also rotate your canvas. If you need to turn your canvas upside down because it's easier to make a line in that direction or turn it sideways, go right ahead and do that. And we're basically going right over all those traceable lines um, if you can't see your traceable lines anymore, just observe what you see on the video. I would recommend watching it all the way through and pausing at the parts that you need, but just mimic what you see. A big thing of art is learning to strengthen your power of observation. And when you follow along with a painting video, that's exactly what you are doing. And this is a skill that the more that you use it, the more comfortable you get with it, and the more observant you become. All right, so again, as you're using that brush, treat it like a pencil. So you're using just the end of the brush and play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure will create a skinnier line. A uh, little more pressure creates a bit of a wider line. And if this is your first time doing lines like this and you have a variety of widths of line, that is totally okay. 
The next time you go to make lines after today's painting, it will be easier. It will be a little bit more comfortable. So be kind to yourself because your muscles are taking in a lot of information, especially if this is your first time painting or in the beginning stages of your creativity. And again, with anything, the only way to get better is with practice. All right, so we are almost done with the bridge, getting those last railings in there. We are going to let this dry, and then we will come back to the bridge, and we're going to put some shadows on there and some highlights. All right. Oh, and don't forget the underneath. I almost forgot about the structure of the bridge. There we go. All right, so our underpainting is complete. Good job, you guys. So now we're actually going to go back to the foliage and recreate everything we just did. Um, so do take your progress photo, and then we're going to go back to that blue-green mixture, same application, and you'll notice just how much more opaque and how much better it looks with this second layer of acrylic paint. And here, um, as you get into doing this, I'm going to recommend that you actually prop your painting up, look at it from a distance of 5 to 10 feet away, kind of assess, do you need more of that color, do you need less of it, and adjust what you see from that distance, because that distance is the normal viewing distance for artwork and most things in life. And a lot of stuff that you look up, uh, up close at your painting and you go, oh, I really don't like that. Maybe as you step away, you don't even notice that at all. So that's why it's important to um, get different perspectives on your artwork. All right, so we've got those shadows in there. We're going to be moving into the green paint. Same thing, overlapping some of the darker places, um, overlapping the green from the first layer. All right, and just again, filling up that space. All right, remember to breathe. And this particular application, if you do have something that is frustrating you, um, this is a very stress relieving application. So put anything that's irritated you or stressed you out this week into your painting um, and you'll feel a little bit better at the end of the process, a little more relaxed. All right, looking good. And same thing, like I said in the beginning of the painting, um, in the beginning of the video, if you're on a stretched canvas when you reach the edge, just carry your greens and your reds and your other colors just right around the side. All right, and move into your yellow-green mixture at your own pace. And just a bit of a note, I'm still using that middle flat brush to make this, but I'm also, it's hard to see on the video because of the time lapse, but I'm also kind of slightly twisting and twirling the brush in between my fingers. So that way I'm not making the exact same brush mark every single time I touch the canvas. So get in the uh, habit of doing that while you're using this particular application of painting. So that way you're not making the exact same mark. Just kind of move the brush slightly a few millimeters to the left and to the right while you're holding it in your hand. All right, it's coming along nicely. We've got some highlights that we're going to put on there. and We're going to be using the direct yellow this time. And because the underneath is still wet, you'll actually notice that the yellow gets eaten up in the other colors pretty quickly. So take note of how often I am going back and grabbing um, fresh paint. And again, get out of your chair, look at it from that distance, and just assess, do you need a little bit more of a highlight somewhere? Do you need a little bit more of a shadow? Um, and adjust what you need. All right. And when we move on, we will be doing more details in the bridge. We'll put a few lotus flowers um, with our lily pads. And then that kind of takes us into the conclusion of today's painting. All right, so moving down to the pointy brush, the straight green paint, um, just kind of giving a little bit more structure to the lily pads. You can kind of see on the left-hand side and the bottom, not like a full outline, but just a little hint that we've got a shadow um, on these lily pads. So it does not have to be um, an exact outline here. Again, just like the shadows, it just gives a little bit more of structure to um, our lily pads. And same thing with the yellow. We'll go on the opposite side because the yellow is considered our highlight and that green was considered our shadow. All right, and then we are going back up to the foliage. We're going to go one more highlight with white paint. And this is going to be real similar to when you applied the yellow paint. That white's going to get diffused pretty quickly, especially if your paint's still wet. 
And I do recommend doing this in the foliage while your paint is wet. And again, just that nice pop of that white highlight really brings that part forward. All right, so looking good. Again, really proud of you guys for just stepping out of your comfort zone and finding creative outlets. I recommend all my students to find creative outlets on a regular basis. All right, so good place to pause the video, take your progress photo. You do want your bridge to be fully dry by the time we do this. And we're going to go back to the blue and the red mixture. Because again, we're not using black in our painting today. And I am using the small pointy brush. And this is the shadow element for our bridge. So basically I'm taking each one of those squares that is considered the negative space of the bridge, where you can see through it and see some of the foliage there, um, right underneath um, that line, we're just kind of adding a line underneath it and to the left of the pole. It does not have to be exact towards the end of the bridge. I did the right hand side and towards the front of the bridge closer to the viewer. I did the left hand side. Again, just observe what you see. And if it's a little bit different than what I do, it's still going to translate as a bridge. Don't worry. Um, it'll actually look even better once we do our white highlights, that little pop of a color. Same thing on that far end of that bridge. Underneath the pole, you're thinking of this is the shadow, the furthest spot away from where the light is touching it. And then we'll be doing the highlight with white on the opposite side. And the more that you paint, the more you're going to become comfortable with the terms I just used today. Highlights, midtones, and shadows. And the more that you can learn to see those um, in everyday life and when you continue to paint, just the easier your painting process will go. All right, so we've got those shadows on there. We're going to clean the brush really good. We're going to go into white paint and basically be putting these on the opposite side. So it's going to go on the top of the pole, um, top of each of those little um, structures. <laughs> and again, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. But again, just giving the hint that this is the place where the light is touching this object first. And again, as you look at it from a distance, this makes a little bit more sense. So I'm really proud of you guys. This is looking awesome. So now we're going to move into putting those lotus flowers in the bottom in the lily pads. So we're making a light pink, starting with the white, adding a tiny amount of red. And to make the lotus flowers, if you just do two V's, nestled inside of each other, kind of one big V and then another V inside of it. Um, that kind of helps make your little lotus flowers. Or make one big V and then just little dash marks um, in the middle of it. Now if you want to change colors of your flowers or you want to put some flowers uh, throughout the rest of the painting, I highly recommend that you do that. And for your flowers, they can just be little dots. They don't have to be the exact shape of any flower. So now we're moving in with that red and just same thing, little dash marks just kind of breaking up the space of that pink. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with white, just a few little dash marks. Again, that white is that highlight. And then we'll be grabbing some green and giving each of these flowers a stem that goes off um, towards the lily pads, towards the bottom of the canvas. All right, you guys, thanks so much for getting creative and painting with me. Uh, please don't wait too long to do your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. 
So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.